big part of it. Uh, when I look around here and I, I look at uh, this, uh, you know, there are really four questions that come to mind. One is, what is it? The other is, uh, what, what, what's it for? Why, why is it here? Uh, third, third thing is how to get it here. And then the fourth is, why wasn't it completely blown up in the, uh, in the uh, Trinity test? Uh, the answer to those four questions is really a fascinating tale, and uh, it really points out what the people in the uh, Manhattan Project and also uh, General Groves, head, who headed up the Manhattan Project, the conservative approach that they took to their work, and the extent that they went to to develop the atomic bomb. Uh, the first thing then is that, well, what is it? Initially, uh, Jumbo was 28 feet long. It's 12 and a half feet in uh, external diameter. Uh, I uh, read three sources, and uh, this is how sources can uh, vary. They said the wall thickness was 8 inches. I saw another one 10 inches, and I saw another one 15 inches. I just measured it, and it's 6 inches. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it weighed... 214 <coughs> uh, 214 tons doesn't sound like a big number unless you know how big a ton is, but that, uh, that equates out to 428,000 pounds. <coughs> and, uh, well, why? Uh, why is it here? Back, uh, we have to go back to February 1944. <coughs> uh, the Manhattan Project is approaching its second year. Uh, we still hadn't produced any plutonium or uranium yet. Uh, plutonium was being uh, developed at, uh, and uh, made in uh, Hanford, uh, and also the uranium at Oak Ridge. Neither facility was finished yet, still under construction. So here we sat in February of, uh, of 1944, and uh, they knew at that time the physics had progressed to the point where they knew the uranium bomb would work by using a, a gun type weapon. And that is basically just a gun barrel with a subcritical mass of uranium at one end, the other part of the uranium at the other end with explosives behind it. They shot the explosives, the uranium goes down the, uh, the gun barrel, collides, forms a supercritical mass and it, you have a nuclear explosion. They were pretty confident that that was going to work. And if you go to our museum, that's called uh, the bomb that came out of that is called Little Boy. However, plutonium didn't work. They, they had decided, they, to their chagrin, plutonium wouldn't work. So uh, the gun type, it, uh, you shoot the gun and you only get a certain velocity out of it. They had to assemble that plutonium faster than what the gun could do or it would thermally blow up before it actually had a nuclear chain reaction. So they had to come up with a new system, and uh, that system then was an employed and an imploding shockwave. It took a five point, or five foot six inch wall of explosives. It was uh, designed in 32 lenses. Each of them had a detonator. And it was designed so that the uh, the thing would implode instead of exploding. Expl you know, explosives blow things up and fly all over. This had to go in in a very spherical shock wave and hit that plutonium in the center. <coughs> so here we have about 5,500 pounds of, for you that have explosives, comp B, uh, being shot off. The shock wave comes in and it it hits a plutonium core, 13 pounds of plutonium. It was a hollow, a hollow sphere. They had to double the density of that to get a supercritical mass. They squeezed that down with that shock wave to about the size of a golf ball. So they took, took it and squeezed it down to the size of a golf ball. At that point, the neutrons couldn't get out without hitting another nucleus. Once that happened, then you had to chain reaction. That was so complex that the scientists said, you know, we, we can't really use that in warfare unless we test it. 
and hence we're down here at Trinity, and that's where the test occurred. But uh, Groves was very conservative, very conservative man. He was, uh, he was always worried about what if. What if the detonators set off the HE, which they knew it would, but they didn't have a chain reaction. Well, that 50 through, 55 or 50, 300 pounds of it would just blow things all over this place. We'd had plutonium scattered all over. Plutonium was very precious, so that couldn't happen. So uh, they decided to build a containment uh, vessel to do it. And that's Jumbo. And that's what's here, what's left of it. Uh, how'd they get it here? And that's a fascinating tale. Jumbo was built by Babcock and Wilcox in Barberton, Ohio, just on the outside of Akron. Uh, they uh, started in August of 1944 building this, uh, this uh, jumbo. At the same time, the concern was, how do you get it here? Weighed 214 tons. <coughs> there had never been a load that heavy carried by rail. So they had to figure out how to get it here by rail. Uh, what kind of oil co uh, rail car do you put it on? They finally located a 12-axle low boy uh, rail car that was uh, at the uh, uh, Carnegie, Illinois uh, steel mill. They hold around huge labels of molten steel with it. They got that. Uh, then uh, how, how did they get it here? Now you got uh, 157 tons this uh, rail car weighs. You've got the 214 tons. Now you've got 742,000 pounds that you got to get get down to New Mexico. Uh, they uh, they had to find a safe route. Not all the railroad routes could carry that much weight. They went to uh, a Captain uh, Alexander uh, Hilden. He was the the chief clearance officer for the War Department's transportation department during World War II. He was a walking encyclopedia of where every bottleneck was in the transportation system. He knew where the weak bridges were and everything else. Uh, he uh, plotted a route that went from uh, Akron <coughs> to Juliet, uh, uh, Illinois, which is up by Chicago, down to New Orleans, and from here on it was to go to Los Angeles. He didn't know it was coming here because Groves didn't tell him because of security. <laughs> they didn't know where it was going until it left uh, New Orleans and then the train crew was told it was coming here. They brought it up, uh, the rail lines that we crossed down by uh, San Antonio down there from El Paso, we brought it up on the Santa Fe Railroad to a, to a newly constructed uh, uh, siding down at a place called Pope, New Mexico. You won't find it on the map, it's gone. They unloaded, they had jumbo there. Uh, the, well, what, how do you get it from there? You know, it's 30 miles out there and no roads. What they did was uh, build a trailer, a 64-wheel trailer. They put wide tires on it from B.F. Goodrich. Uh, that was built by the Roger Brothers in Albion, Pennsylvania. And uh, they, built, they built and delivered that big trailer in 30 days. That's how things moved back during the Manhattan Project. They, uh, they got the uh, trailer down. As soon as they got the trailer down, they loaded on Jumbo and headed up here. They had four bulldozers, two, two pulling and uh, three pulling and one pushing, and they pulled it up here the 30 miles. They, they just got it up here, and what happened? They decided that they weren't going to use it. So, so here it's set up here.